uh, this is an article called The Maze, or Your Move, The Maze of Free Will. Uh, and it's it's got this very intuitive uh, beginning. So uh, it says, uh, you arrive at a bakery. Uh, it's the evening of a national holiday. You want to buy a cake with your last $10 to round off the preparations you've already made. There's only one thing left at the store, a $10 cake on the steps of the store uh <laughs> someone is uh shaking a uh oxfam tin so oxfam is a charity uh you stop and it seems quite clear to you it is surely surely is quite clear to you that it's entirely up to you what you do next you are it seems truly radically ultimately free to choose what you do in such a way that you will be ultimately morally responsible for whatever you do choose a fact, you can put the money in the tin, or you can go in and buy the cake. You are not only completely radically free to choose in this situation, you're not free not to choose, or at least that's how it looks. You are condemned to freedom, in Jean-Paul Sartre's phrase. You are fully and explicitly conscious of what the options are, and you can't escape that consciousness. You can't somehow slip out of it. So it really seems like this is up to you. It really seems like you have free will. But uh, in the part we're going to skip over, you know, he, he says, you know, but people are concerned about determinism and honestly, whether or not, you know, that there are all these reasons to, to actually be skeptical, even though it really, really seems like we have free will, there are reasons to worry that we, we don't. And certainly there are reasons to worry that we don't if determinism is true, or even if something like pretty close to determinism is true, even if there's like a little of determinism around the edges. So Strawson writes, the argument goes like this. One, um, you do what you do in the circumstances in which you find yourself because of the way you then are. Two, so if you're going to be ultimately responsible for what you do, you're going to have to be ultimately responsible for the way that you are, at least in certain mental respects. Three, but you can't be ultimately responsible for the way that you are in any respect at all, uh, four, so you can't be ultimately responsible for what you do. And as he points out, the, the crucial step here uh, is three. You can't be ultimately responsible for the way that you are in any respect at all. Because I've done this in, in like intro to philosophy classes. And very often at this point, students will say, oh, come on. Yes, you can. Right. You know, you can work on yourself. You know, you can change how you are. So Strawson has a response to this. He has an argument for three. Here's how it goes. A, it is undeniable that the way you initially are is a result of your genetic inheritance and early experience. Right? Nobody's choosing how they are as a little kid. B, it's undeniable that uh, these are things for which you can't be held to be in any way responsible, morally or otherwise. C, but you can't at any later stage of life hope to acquire true or ultimate moral responsibility for the way that you are by trying to change the way that you already are as a result of genetic inheritance and previous experience. All right, got the next one. Uh, D, why not? Because both the particular ways in which you try to change yourself and the amount of success you have when trying to change yourself will be determined by how you already are as a result of your genetic inheritance and previous experience. E, and any further changes that you uh, may be able to bring about after you've brought about certain initial changes will in turn be determined via the initial changes by your genetic inheritance and previous experience. All right, got through all that. Uh, Jen, what does all that mean? Uh, it means that because we uh, have no control over who we are and what we do is determined by who we are, then we have no control over what we do, and therefore we are not morally responsible for what we do. All right, but what about what the those interest students I was talking about earlier will say? I mean, come on, you can be in control of, of, uh, of how you are. I mean, there are people who are terrible people, and then they decide that they're really going to like work on becoming better people. We all know this happens. There are you know, ice cold killers who, you know, who, who, who like redeem themselves slowly. Are over. there though? Yeah, no, there are, there are, I, 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 there are. So, uh, and even if you don't believe that there are, uh, there, there are certainly people who, who work on, on changing themselves. With sure. 
and the type of change that you try to make and the level of success that you have at that change is determined by the way you are because of genetic inheritance and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, uh, so Strassen's, you know, the way I'd put it is to really see Strassen's point. Oh, you can always date the bad boy. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's clearly what Jen did. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say marry the bad boy. I said date the bad boy. Well, uh, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, so if you are, as Dora Pryor say, you know, in that situation, you were a big jerk and you at least like to think you're less of a jerk today. But you might be more of a jerk tomorrow. And, uh, you know, but you're being less of a jerk today has to do with, like, decisions you made in the past. I am going to work on being less of a jerk. Um, well, even if that that is, in fact, what happened and and you you did, you know, make a decision and, 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 and like, you stuck to your decision and, you know, and you, you really reformed yourself. Um, if, uh, if that's the, uh, if that's the case... Uh, the point that Strassen is making here is, okay, but wait a second, let's think about that decision. Why did you make that decision to try to change yourself? Well, Because of my genetic inheritance and how I was as a small child. Yeah, I mean, wh whatever, um, presumably, he would say, anytime you make a decision about anything, you have... You know, my genetic inheritance and how I was as a small child. Well, I mean, ultimately, right, you know, so to, but like somebody could definitely listen to this and think, well, come on, is that really true always? And you think, well, okay, but why do you think you made a decision? And you could explain um, the experiences you had that influenced you to make those decisions. You could explain the particular guilt you were feeling at a particular time that made you think, ah, oh, I'm going to work on being less of a jerk. And then Strassen's point would be, uh, I felt guilty <clears throat> because of my genetic inheritance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and how I was as a small child. Yeah, I mean, all, and then the environment too, but whatever. That's also outside of your control, right? You know, that they, so that every element of that, right? You felt guilty at that moment. Well, that didn't just like pop into being in the universe with no cause, right? There was a specific chain of cause and effect that led to you feel guilty at that moment. And that chain of cause and effect is ultimately going to get down to some combination of your environment. And sure, one more time. My genetic inheritance <laughs> and how I was as a small child. There you go. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so this is this is an argument. Of, like, I, I really like assigning this at like the like the first like you know week of class or something because it's it's very. I mean, you know, sometimes. Well, my class just had it like three weeks ago. Okay, well, we, we're a little behind, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, mine's much more advanced. Uh, or we just did things in a different order. Uh, uh, so. Uh, but I like it because because uh, I, I think it it like usefully screws with a lot of people's heads because uh, because this is a very fundamental belief, very hard to rid yourself of that you're in control of your actions. And um, somebody says something about a get out of jail free card, and mm -hmm. at the end of the article. Ian McEwen said something about, I have no idea why he was quoted. This seems very random, but at the end of the article, he says, yeah, I get this. I think the arguments here are watertight, but I still feel like I'm sailing my own little ship and I'm going to continue to take responsibility for what I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the reason he's quoting Ian McEwen is because in stuff like opinion pieces, I think some people think that it like, lends an aura of classiness to the proceedings to quote a novelist uh, but that, him in particular why why is he I know, I, you know whatever you know maybe they're friends maybe, maybe they are you know all kinds of people are friends and it were friends or enemies of people you wouldn't expect them to be <laughs> uh, as it uh, as it turns out augustine burroughs father's best friend was gettier there you go um there's a ryan has a nice call back to the video uh, so uh, this is how it's going to be forever. It's going to be both and Seven Eleven. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah. So, so I think this is like a really useful way to get people who haven't really, who like might not see why there's a problem about about free will and determinism. See, David Drake right there. He has he has his finger on it because this is the whole compatibilist thing. You can do what you want, but you can only want one thing. 
and being able to do what you want, that's good enough. That's free will. Now you can't want anything different. So you don't really have options. Uh, but that one thing, which is the only thing you can want, you can do that. Yeah. I would deny that that's what actually most compatibilists think that as long as you're doing what you want, you have free will. I think, I think that, uh, uh, I mean, I guess to be fair, there are early compatibilists who say things kind of like that, like, like David Hume sometimes sort of sounds like that, but I, I do think that there are more complicated and also more plausible uh, compatibilists. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There is a free will. No, Ian McEwen, I, I am a big fan of Ian McEwen actually. So yeah. All, all good. Just just don't know why he in particular is in that particular thing. Yeah. Um, well, maybe he's just the only the only novelist who weighed in on this particular, you know, argument. Maybe he is. Uh, yeah. So Marxist Leninist in the chat says, I don't understand the nature versus nurture debate. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about the nature versus nurture debate. I would say that the um, that like Strauss's point was it doesn't matter how much is nature and how much is nurture because both of those things are outside of your control. I would say the uh, you know the specifics there are outside of our purview. Yeah, yeah, like what, what like Strassen's argument would be whatever you know whatever you think the percentages are mm -hmm. doesn't matter because none of that's in your in your control. Um, and and I think you know even if you're a compatibilist, uh, you know, like our friend Ryan, and and you think that. Um, uh, you know, or like me, but he knows more about it. And I, you know, I just think it, uh, the, uh, and you, uh, and you think, um, that what makes, uh, what makes an action free is something like that you, uh, that you decide, you do, you decide to do it by means of a process in your brain. That's at least somewhat responsive to reasons for and against doing things, uh, that, you know, I, I, I think that, yeah, how you got to have that that reasons response of exit said, yeah, that's outside of your control. But the, the claim would be that the actual, you know, that um, that what it is for something to be inside your control is that you're thinking through reasons to do it or not do it. And you understand them and your way in them and 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 all of that stuff. But uh, I think Jen reacts to that the way that uh that we all react to uh, charlie kirk charlie kirk <laughs> saying both <laughs> so uh there you go uh we're probably not going to solve this tonight but uh but this was fun you have been watching free public content from give them an argument to access every single episode of the show the main show on uh, monday nights all of the streams all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>